Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as we take the Guilo's kit, the big kit of the Hellcat, and go from this to this. Let's get to it. When the U.S. entered World War II after the December 7, 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, the primary carrier-borne fighter for the U.S. Navy was a Grumman-built F-4F Wildcat. I'll show you some pictures of the Wildcat. The Wildcat was developed in the mid to late 1930s. It was a smaller airplane, and the issue with the Wildcat, it just simply wasn't good enough to fight the main carrier fighter of the Japanese, the Zero. U.S. Navy realized this, worked with Grumman to create a follow-on to the Wildcat called the F-6F Hellcat, which is a model that we'll, we'll try to build in this series. The Hellcat was a considerably bitter, bigger airplane. It had a 2,000 horsepower engine, which is a huge engine for carrier-based fighter. Grumman worked closely with Navy fighter pilots for combat experience, <clears throat> made the cockpit higher so they could uh, see the carrier deck better, a sloping nose, just a lot of improvements that made for a, a superior aircraft and one that could beat the Zero. The combat debut was in September of 1943, so the plane fought for two years before the surrender in Tokyo Bay in uh, September of 1945. 12,200 Hellcats were built by Grumman, and the Hellcat was responsible for shooting down 5,200 enemy aircraft, which is a record. As a reminder, Guilos makes two versions of the Hellcat. Um, in their series of 500, kit number 503 is a Hellcat. But it's a smaller one. It's got a 16 and a half inch wingspan. In this video, we're going to be doing the bigger one, the 1000 series, which is their uh, giant scale World War II series. This Hellcat here with a 32 and a half inch wingspan. It's basically twice the size of the other one. So make sure you know which one you're getting. Let's go through an unbox of the Guilo's Hellcat model. So you can see this is a considerably bigger model than the previous Guilo's we've done. <clears throat> My most recent one is the Porter. You can see the size of the box. Again, this is the parts on equipment. This will have to use regular RC equipment. <clears throat> and what happens, the wingspan is about 32 inches. And you'll see even here, it says scale model for the adult collector. So this is a pretty serious model. It has words that can be used for control line, single channel radio control, and even as a dis display model. This was designed before the common uh, microelectric power systems and smaller radio control gear. Nobody puts in a single channel radio these days. And my plan on this, like I do for all these Guilo's constructions, is it'll be a prototype to see how the plane goes together, <clears throat> what the strengths and weaknesses are, and um, what to do different on a second follow-on one. So for example, as I look at this, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make this a three-channel model with um, electronic speed control built in, elevator, and ailerons. There's really no need for rudder because as part of my build on this, I'm not going to put on any landing gear. It's just going to be pretending with a gear up and just have it land on its belly. But again, this will be part of the thought process I go through building it. You can see that there's a bunch of operational features that they have here in the pictures. We'll go through in the kit. A big cockpit interior, more detailed engine. You can actually put in a retractable landing gear, not for any flying version, just for display purposes, etc. So... There are a lot of these vacuum form parts, nothing super special, but again, these are a good starting point for a static display that you may be making. <clears throat> these are the building instructions, which are pretty helpful, actually very helpful, just with step-by-step -step how to build a fuselage. It's a standard Guilo's construction. You build half a fuselage of the formers on the building board, take it off, put the other half on, and then put on 1 16th inch uh, stringers. A little bit more detail with plastic exhaust, things of that nature. Note also that you have the wing frame. You can have a solid wing if you want to do that. Same for the tail surfaces. There are covering frames, plastic parts, just a lot of detail more for uh, plastic models than anything else. Notice also you'll have to build the underside of the belly because it's essentially a mid-wing um, 
fuselage, the, the wing is in the middle of the fuselage, so the wing will be glued in, but that'll just be something that we'll have to consider. And that's that. They also have some additional instructions <clears throat> if you want to make uh, movable tail surfaces, like for an elevator or a rudder. Landing gear, uh, just for static display, how to do that. I'll have to think about how I'm going to do this. I'm not sure right now. For this prototype, I'm strongly considering making the tail surfaces 3 32nd inch sheet balsa just to have them in, just be simple to see how the model flies. Then we can work later on differences. I will probably put in these ailerons here, but notice they have an aileron and a flap, the large flap for carry based operations. What I'm probably going to do is make this a continuous aileron all the way across just to have good roll control for the model. Again, I'll have to think about that as I build it. There's some more kind of, uh, um, pictures here for the retractable gear. Um, notice that it, it, it swings 9 degrees and goes in. This is more for the display model than anything else. The decals will add a lot to it. These are just some notes of uh, covering and some things they've eliminated from various kits. The uh, tissue covering. This you don't see too often. These are just cardboard cutouts that will go to simulate the interior of the airplane more for a static display. We're not going to use these for the um, flying model. These are the plans themselves. Again, if you built one of those kits, you pretty much built them off. Gas free flight, we're not going to worry about that. Standard fuselage, a lot of work on a U control belt crank and a gas engine. Again, uh, we're not going to be uh, worrying about that. Note for the U control that they do have the solid balsa tail surfaces, which I'll probably use in the radio control model. So that's a good indicator right there. And also, they picked 332 inch balsa, that's what I was planning on using. Three view is always nice. The side view is helpful for building this. Good pictures for how it all goes together. Uh, that's good. On the back of the built-up stab and rudder, again for the free flight version and the wing, and I'll have to do some thinking, head scratching for the ailerons on, on exactly how to do that. So again, no major surprises. Don't have to worry about the spars of landing gear because I'm not going to have landing gear on this, on this aircraft. All right, this is an additional set of plans for things like the movable ailerons, primarily for their static display. Again, I'll be using it for the flying version with cut lines into the kit as it comes in. No rudder, don't have to worry about that. We're not gonna have a rudder control. And again, differences for if you wanna do the built up um, stab and elevator, it's gonna be 332nd balls. So I've pretty much made that decision now. Rocket spawns, we're not gonna do those because they're just gonna get knocked off with the grass landings. But again, good information if you want to have a more detailed model for that static display or whatever. The cowl is here, and what I always look for is see how the engine is going to fit on that. So again, it's going to be a pretty good fit. The engine can go right up against the firewall. It'll stick out, and notice how much of the propeller arc is covered by um, the cowl, the front surface of the area. So that's why it's good, I think, to have a little bit stronger engine to give it Plenty of power due to the blockage of that collar right there, but that, that will go there. Canopy is very helpful for putting it in. Got a little bit dented there, but that's the way it is. Just some uh, odds and ends for plastic parts for the retractable landing gear. The balsa feels like good lightweight balsa. It is die cut. These are, this is not a laser cut kit, but the Wood quality looks fairly reasonable. Die cutting is die cutting. It's about as good as you're going to get right there. This is all the balsa parts. A few more plastic like with the pilot. I'm not going to worry about that. And this one really odd thing. This is some sort of vinyl plastic for the firewall and mounts for the bell cranks and things like this. They state in the directions that this is better than plywood. This is why they put it in. The reason they have this here is there's no plywood in any Quilio's kit. You can't die cut the plywood. So they put this stuff in. We're going to throw this away and not worry about it. Wheels that we're not going to use. So that's essentially the unboxing. There's a lot of stuff in the kit. There's a lot of options for building the kit. The big thing that I'm going to have to think about is the ailerons, what to do on that. But I'll, I'll work that through as I build the wing and we'll get started with construction shortly. As you can see from the inboxing, the Guilos Hellcat is a considerably bigger aircraft than the previous Guilos models that were suitable for about a three ounce flight weight 
with the Park Zone equipment. <clears throat> I don't know what the target weight is going to be for this airplane, but it is considerably bigger. So we, there's absolutely no way to use the Park Zone equipment. So what I'm going to use is just a regular RC setup <clears throat> with the receiver, servos, etc. So this is what I have right here with the HS55 servos. As I mentioned, it will be a three channel setup with ailerons, um, elevator, and throttle. I'm not going to have a rudder on this airplane. And this is the motor. So it's a Park Zone. Uh, 270, uh, 370 motor. It's good for models uh, up to um, 12 ounces of weight. This will certainly be less than 12 ounces, but what will happen is it's better to have a little bit of extra power and with the Hellcat there's a very large cowl surface area that blocks part of the prop. So I think it's okay to put this on. We'll just, this will be part of the experiment of building the airplane. The one thing I want to point out is <clears throat> for the ailerons, I have uh, individual servos for each aileron. Recall that when you set up your model for this, this comes up automatically when you do a new model. But to demonstrate the separate ailerons, I'm going to go press down uh, the main menu. I'm going to go down to System Setup. Again, this comes up when you first set up the model, but we'll go to it now. Notice that you have the model select the model type, which is Acro right here, as opposed to helicopter, model name, we'll skip over that, but notice you have a model type and an aircraft type. It's a little bit confusing. The aircraft type is where we're going to fix the servos. So the aircraft type, you have a normal wing, a normal tail. <clears throat> what we're going to do is go down to the wing, press that once, and go to dual ailerons. You see how there's two ailerons at each wing? We select that. And now we go back up to the main menu and that should be good to go. Just began construction of the wing of the Hellcat. I wanted to point out a few things for the wheels kit. As you can see here on the building board, it's a fairly large airplane compared to the normal wheels kit, which is fine. I did confirm that the parts are die cut um, just the way it is with die cuts. The wood is fairly heavy. But one thing that's interesting is with the die cut, and this is pointed out on the um, instructions, the notches for the 1 16th inch spar on the wings are not put in place. You have to cut them out. So this is an example of the wing rib F1 with the spars cut out. So what you have to do is, if you could just take a look at the plants here, you've got to see where the um, 1 16th inch spars are. When they go through the rib, they're on top. When they break up, they're on the bottom of the rib. Top, top, bottom, uh, top, bottom. And cut the notches out like that just as you line up. It's just something you have to do. They don't explain uh, clearly in the structures. Trailing edge. The leading edge is here. Note that there's a little note here that the um, leading edge is blocked up 7 seconds of an inch high. That's because the um, rib curls up, uh, curves up a little bit, so the spar is not level on the ground, is up like that. Just something to keep in mind as you do it. The other thing that's a little bit off is you can see on this front view of the wing, the dihedral is at these points about a third out from the wing. It doesn't start at the beginning. The reason for that, when you look at the top view, the dihedral is here. This center box section is where all the landing gear is included, so the gear goes straight back, the dihedral goes up from here. Again, not a big deal, but just an, another reason to play, pay attention on the directions. Another thing that I did was I just put the radio, um, the receiver in the middle of the plan. I want to see how um, long my uh, cords were for the ailerons. I, didn't, I really didn't want to put in an extension cord. So I think I could put the aileron servos here by about rib F7. And this means that I drew in the ailerons a little bit longer than on the plan, which is okay They go out to here to, to go with um, the servo by F7. So that's something to think about as you plan um, the building. The other thing that I want to point out is <clears throat> with Guilo's airplanes, you want to keep it as light as possible. You want to do that for any airplane, really. This plane, the Hellcat's a little bit bigger than the other Guilo's one, so the weight's not as super critical as before, but I noticed looking here, the ribs are very closely spaced and they're, they're fairly dense balls. So what I did was every other rib I have, I will not put in. So I'll put in F3, I'll not do F4, F5, 
not put in six, seven, et cetera, all the way through. So that'll save about, um, that'll save about 14 ribs of the wing that I just don't have to put on. I'm sure it'll have enough strength. That'll save a little bit of weight. This is the beginning of the wing construction. Note the leading edge spar is blocked up along the length. It varies from the middle to the end. The, the beginnings of the ailerons are shown on the plan here with a center rib. And here the ailerons are built into place. The 3 32nd inch balsa provides enough rigidity for the control horn and just a good solid aileron. Uh, if you look here, we've got it pinned down over the board. The top 1 16th inch stringers are in place. Note the uh, dihedral brake here. Uh, it's a little bit ways out on the wing. The fuselage will go here. Again, this is where the landing gear retracted under. I decided to make the ailerons. I put 3 32nd inch balsa for the bottom. It will sand everything up here and just have that fit in about there. I think, I think that'll be about right once everything is, is in place. The overlap, uh, uh, 1 16th inch string is here. I think will be strong enough to hold everything in place. Two of the things I want to point out is on the plans, they give three types of dihedral. A uh, one inch dihedral for U-Control, uh, this regular one for a scale model, and two inches for the free flight model. I went to the two flight, uh, two inches of dihedral. I think that's a little bit much for this one because of the radio, because of the ailerons, but again, this is a prototype just to see how it goes together. I think if I would do it again, I'd have the, the regular dihedral, but, but not a big deal. So that's in place. Also notice that the ribs here, every other rib I not put in, you can see on the plan, there's a rib here, a rib here, a rib here. I think this is plenty of ribs for the type of flying that I'll be doing. It'll save a fair amount of weight by not having the extra ribs in there. So the next step will be taking the wing off from the building board, putting in the stringers on the bottom, and then I'll have to figure out what to do to put the um, aileron servos on here and make cutouts for the aileron um, connecting wires to go to the center section, and that'll be tomorrow. I've completed the wing, so let me go over a few things to consider on this. So here's the wing structure. <clears throat> it's, it's not robust. You know, these are pretty thin stringers, but it, it, it holds together well. And what'll happen with this, when you put on the uh, iron-on covering, the park light covering, it gives a surprising amount of strength to the whole structure. I did want to point out that the wood in the Guillos kits, at least these older kits, is uneven. Some is, is denser and lighter than others, and the density means it weighs more. So what had happened, it's a fairly large um, leading edge. It's a three-eighths of an inch by a quarter of an inch, and, and you carve it to shape. The problem is this half was quite dense and heavy than this half, and when I tried to balance the wing in the middle, this side was much heavier. So I put in my servos, and because this is heavier, I had to glue in this washer to make sure the wing balances. So it's an important point when you build models like this to make sure the wing laterally balances. It, it, if it was heavy on one side and didn't catch that, it could cause the flight characteristics to turn one side and maybe catch it by surprise. The other thing I had to do <clears throat> is plan ahead for the servo installation. So the servos are just double-sided taped to the side of the rib here. That should hold them in. A little bit of a shelf to apply the iron-on covering that it could grab onto, and I, I, I added that. Same for both sides. Note also, I had to dig a little cut in each rib to fit in the wires to the um, for the servos to the center section. One sixteenth inch cross member just to keep everything in place, and this is the middle of the airplane. This will plug into the receiver. The other thing I wanted to point out was the ailerons. So so these fit in pretty good, and what I did to make sure that everything worked okay is the base of this aileron is 3 32nd inch ball, so it's pretty, pretty thick, but that's a good structure to put on the um, tail end of these ribs that I just cut off. Notice also how it is uh, beveled. You can see the angle in there, so that way when you put on the hinges on top, the ailerons can go down like that. So it's important to put that bevel in so the ailerons you see on the bottom so they can go down in that manner. So the wing is pretty much done and I have started on the fuselage. One thing to keep in mind with the fuselage is this is the thing I'll start tomorrow to put down the center keels of the half formers. Because this is a die cut kit, it's not laser cut, 
your form has come like this. The little cutouts for the stringers, you have to cut them out yourself. What that means is you've got to put this onto the plan, mark where the stringers are. See these little lines that extend out, and then you have to cut each channel like that for the stringers. Okay, so I'm about mostly done with that by going through all the formers, laying them down there, cutting in um, the indentations for the stringers, and then I can go about building that half of the fuselage. And the other thing that I'll have to do along with that is figure out how to build it a hatch so that I have access to the battery and the uh, electronics to the fuselage. And we'll tackle that tomorrow. Here's a fuselage half completed uh, on the plans. Notice I put in just the lower stringers to make sure everything is held in place so we have space in the top to install the control rods to the control surfaces. So here we are so far. Classic Willow's construction where you have, um, you, know, you build the formers on one half of the fuselage, laid flat on the plan as I showed previously. And then I've just started putting the other half of the formers on this side. And the wing will fit in here. There'll be some underbelly work here. The important thing that I want to discuss here is the making of the hatch. Because with this fuselage, if I don't do anything, there's no way to get inside to, inside to look at the um, servos or change the batteries between flights. So there has to be some sort of access hatch. So what I did was, on the side view right here of the fuselage, again, very handy for all the details and such, is I just marked in a hatch here. You see with the crossed, um, the crossed lines here. So this is the front part of the hatch. It'll go along here and it'll go back here. So this entire canopy section will just lift off. And so what I had to do was to trim some of the formers that will fit on top of the hatch and then just build the bottom ones onto the hatch. So that's what I did right here. I added these two strips of scrap balsa. This will be the top of the hatch, the bottom of the hatch, and it's glued in place because I, I, everything's being built. But I'll be able to cut this away and this whole section back to here should just lift out. I'm going to wait to do the other half before I cut that away to make sure everything's straight. So that's the main thing is to come up with a hatch. One of the reasons I'm having the hatch fairly big, I have no earthly idea where the center gravity or where the equipment is going to be located for the center gravity. The center balance is right here, which is a normal place. The motor is fairly heavy. Uh, the tail surfaces will add some weight. To get the proper center gravity, it'll, it's all where the battery goes. So I have to have access to a range of locations for the battery to locate the center gravity. So. Um, We'll go ahead and put the second half of the fuselage on. I put in just a couple stringers just to give it some rigidity. Take off the hatch, put in the elevator servo. I'll mount the engine so I can start thinking of the center of gravity. And then with that engine, I can get the control runs out to the elevator, put in the stringers, and we'll be done with the fuselage. Uh, what the big thing was today was I made the removable hatch. So here's the hatch, it just slides into place, I'll figure out how to keep it in place. And um, this gives good access to the fuselage inside here for location of the battery for the center of gravity. And the center of gravity is about here, you can see I've already put on the motor, so it's pretty nose heavy. This is, this is a pretty big motor for this airplane, but we'll have to put on the tail surfaces and other things. But we have plenty of room to locate the battery to achieve the proper CG. CG. So this is the hatch right here. Um, the canopy will go here. Now, I want to point out that I put in the stringers on the bottom of the fuselage, which is fine. What I've learned from these Guilos kits is you've got to keep this top completely free of the stringers until you have your push rods for the tail control surfaces. It's just impossible to do it with all the stringers in place. So what will happen tomorrow, I'll put in a floor for the battery and receiver, put in the single elevator servo, and run the wire, the music wire, <clears throat> back to the tail to control the elevator, then I can put in the remaining uh, stringers to enclose that in place. The other thing I did was I have installed the engine. Um, again, this is a jury-rigged uh, firewall. It's uh, two 1 16th inch pieces epoxy together. I think that'll be enough to hold it in place. Uh, the motor's right there. Some popsicle sticks in front with epoxy, some plywood in back. I think I'll put a few a few more uh, plywood reinforcement back here, as well as some bolts of fill along here, just to make this as strong as possible to hold in the fuselage. But again, with these Guilos models, get the motor, 
your electronics and control stuff, control rods in place before you start covering it with the stringers. This is an important juncture of building any Guilos kit is uh, siding and putting in place the internal guts of the airplane before you put on the 1 16th inch square balls of stringers. That means the motor, electronic speed control, receiver, servos, everything pretty much needs to be in place because once you put on the stringers, everything's buttoned up. So what I've done so far, this is the uh, fin rudder. As I mentioned, it'll be a three channel model so the rudder won't, won't move. We have the stabilize, uh, stabilizer and elevator, 332nd inch balsa, note the little reinforcing balsa cross piece there. This is the main thing I want to show on the fuselage. We've put on the engine in place here. Entryway for the, for the um, wires, just a masking tape to keep the uh, three wires from touching each other and, and shorting out. Electronic speed control, the receiver with Velcro, the battery, and here is the servo with servo tape just mounted to a bolt on the side. This is the key thing. The uh, control uh, push rod for the elevator goes through little holes in the formers to keep it from flexing. And then it come out here. And when the elevator is in place, it matches perfectly to push up um, the elevator in the back. Note also, I've marked the center of gravity here because I'm very aware of that, and we're getting in the ballpark. It's balancing in the center of gravity with the battery that far back. So we'll add some more weight with the stringers, the rudder, some work back here, but I think we're in the ballpark. Also, to test that everything works out, you want to make sure the motor goes in the right direction. So you can see the elevator servo works fine there. And we'll test the motor. Plenty of power, very smooth running, as you can see there. As a reminder, if the motor, if any outrunner brushless motor is running in the wrong direction, with the three connection wires, you just swap any two. It doesn't matter which two, it'll reverse the direction of the motor, everything works fine. So just uh, make sure you get that sorted out before you start covering everything. So what'll happen next is I'll put in the remaining uh, stringers. I'm gonna put some more reinforcement here to make sure this firewall is as strong as possible. And then we'll get ready to start covering it. This is where we are with the um, Hellcat. I think we're just about ready to cover. So uh, this is the fuselage frame. See the motors mounted. Servos are in place. Note the um, filling balsa that I used here. This provides a little bit of strength, but more importantly, <clears throat> as we cover the covering, it's, it's an anchor point for the covering along here. The same reason I did this along here. The hatch comes off pretty well. Everything's in place. Receiver, servos, control rod for the elevator. <clears throat> With the tail, I had to um, glue the stab on here. The reason for that was I'll have to cover this in place. I wanted to glue it in so it's aligned to the wing. The elevator's located like this and after the elevator's in place I'll put in the rudder or the rudder fin just to make sure everything works out okay. There's no binding. So that was the reason for that procedure. Here I'll just fill this in with fill. Well, uh, balls of fill. I'll figure that out once the elevator's in place. So overall, that's where we are. I think the next step is covering. Uh, we'll glue the wing in place. Once it's covered, remember with the Hellcat, we we'll glue the wing in, have to fill in the bottom of the fuselage. We have these little half formers that will go along here, put in the stringers so that'll all uh, fill in once we, once we get it in place. So I think we're in pretty good shape and covering is next. Oh, the one thing I want to point out, I put the planks along here, again, a little bit of strength but I'll go ahead and take the fairly normal Hellcat color scheme of blue on top, the kind of um, white-ish color on the bottom, and this area will be a place where the monocoat iron-on covering can stick as we put on the two different colors. So we finished covering the wing, and this is the Hellcat's top wing with a distinctive blue color scheme. And I just the cream color is a little bit whiter on the rail aircraft, but this is close enough for this model. I've also connected up the ailerons with the um, attachments here, then a Z-bend to the control horns and the ailerons. So we're in pretty good shape on that. 
Um, again, it's a prototype model. I just used scotch tape for the hinges. We're just seeing how this thing goes together, how it flies. So one thing about this wing, if you remember, there was a bunch of 1 16th inch stringers. Um, the reason they have those stringers is common to all the Guilo's kits. These are designed as free flight models, and it's an easy way to have a design approach to a wide range of models. It's very lightweight, but it's fragile. So when you have a rubber band powered free flight model, fragility is not that important. For a RC model, there, there's, there's more damage that can happen. So what I've done, for example, along here, the wing saddle, you can see that I filled it in with the balsa. And there, I think if I were to make another one, I may make another one, I would spend a lot more time simply covering this area with one thirty-second inch ply, uh, balsa. I think that would help strengthen things up. The other thing that would be very easy to do is cut the notches in the wings just a little bit wider and put two one sixteenth inch square balsa glued together in each one instead of one. And that is a very small amount of weight, but when you have the two balsa one sixteenth inch square glued together, it's an incredibly strong arrangement. I think that would be worthwhile doing. The other thing I want to point out is a covering. So what I used is Hangar 9 Ultra Coat Park Light. Okay, so this is a lightweight covering, hence the light term, and so it's really very easy to work with. It shrinks up nicely. Again, because of all these um, stringers or, or mini spars of the wing, it's a fairly rigid wing. There's no, there's really very little chance of it um, twisting, warping as you shrink the covering. Also, the covering in and of itself, it adds strength to the whole, um, to the whole wing. You can see the balls are filling along uh, here. So the wing feels pretty good. It's a lightweight wing. It's rigid, so I'm, I'm happy with that. But one other thing I want to mention on this covering, not as many people are building airplanes as it was 20 years ago, uh, newsflash. So what will happen is, it used to be you'd go to Hangar 9 Tower Hobbies, there was nothing but building supplies, glues, tools, everything. These days it's less. When you go to, um, I go to Horizon Hobby for this Hangar 9, and um, on the Horizon uh, Hobby website, if you look at the covering, a lot of it's on back order or out of stock. So my input to you is if you're going to plan on building these Guilo models, to build up an inventory of these um, heat shrink coverings with the colors that you like, there's absolutely no problem getting neon pink or some, you know, orange color, but the colors that you want, like blue, if you see it, order it because there's problems with the supply chain. I don't know if it's from overseas or whatever, but just if you see it, get it because they're becoming harder and harder to obtain. This is where we are on the fuselage so far. Uh, the main thing is I've attached the stabilizer. I've covered the top and bottom and the elevator is working like this. I've epoxied the rudder fin assembly to the top. And the reason I did this now was I wanted to put in the stabilizer in the elevator and to fit on the um, fin rudder to make sure that the elevator went up and down. As I mentioned, it's a three channel model. The rudder will not um, be functional on this model, but things look good for that. So there's my control rod set up earlier that we discussed. I'll put in a control horn. There'll be no problem setting that up. This picture shows the underside of the fuselage. It's covered, ready for the wing to be installed. The wing is epoxied in place. It's all fully covered. And the next step is to add the half formers to the bottom for the belly of the fuselage. The keel is in place. Finally, the three uh, 1 16th inch square balsa stringers, and it's ready for covering. I finished my build of the Guilo's Hellcat, the large one. Um, I think it came out pretty good. Again, this is a prototype. Just It's, it's not a super whooper finish. Just see how everything goes together, and more importantly, see how it flies. Uh, center gravity came in just about right. The total weight of the airplane is 12 ounces. I can't measure that against anything, but it, it seems about right. It'd be nice if it was lighter, but there's just, it's a big kit. Um, the hatch is here. You can see the internal components of the receiver, elevator servo, electronic speed control, uh, the engine's here, plastic cowling. Um, Everything really went together pretty well. Some things I'll point out on the bottom. I put a little bit of balsa sheet here because it'll land on the belly. A popsicle stick for a skeg to try to keep the bottom from scuffing up too much. Individual aileron servos, the elevator control rod there. So kit went together well. The wing is warp free. 
center, gravi center gravity is in the proper place. So we'll give it a, a flight. It looks like tomorrow might be good weather. We'll see if we can get into the air tomorrow. All right, well, it looks good. Battery's in place. We'll go ahead and give it a test flight now. Wish you luck. All right, just completed the uh, first two test flights of the Hellcat, and I couldn't be any happier. The, the first flight was a little bit out of trim. It was pulling to the left, uh, but we fixed that just with a, a couple clicks of the trim on the transmitter. We flew the second flight, and the plane absolutely flies well. You've got to keep the speed up a little bit, which is to be expected for a World War II fighter like this. But it handles well. The three channels with the ailerons and the elevator are fine, and I, I'm, just, I'm just super pleased with how the model flew. So we'll go back to the shop. Do a final debrief um, discussion and then um, good luck with your build. We are back in the shop from our two test flights today of the Hellcat and I just couldn't be any more pleased with this airplane and how it flew. You can see from the videos it is a World War II fighter it zips right along. A few times I got a little bit slow don't don't do that but I was trying to stay close in uh, for the camera work but it handles very well. The first flight we definitely had some uh, a, a pull to the right but left trim fixed that. I think for any of these um, larger low wing fighters, you could get away with rudder and elevator control, but it is so much easier uh, with the maneuverability of this aircraft to have the ailerons to do that. I, I just got instant wing correction with the rudder. It's not gonna be quite as quick. The belly landings are okay. It's not a long-term solution, but I just can't see flying something like this with landing gear sticking out. Everything held together pretty well. One tip that if you do fly these things, um, and you're landing on the ground, you've got to make sure the throttle is in the off position when it lands, otherwise the, the motor will be trying to turn when it hits the ground. But it flew well, it, it handled well. One thing I kind of found out that I was sensing, but I wasn't sure, notice there's blue on top, then the light uh, covering on the bottom. That's helpful for orientation. The model's not super big, it was fairly low sun in the sky. When the model gets away, uh, you can, you gotta make sure which side is up. Uh, it did help with it, those two sides. Also, as I mentioned, this is just a rough prototype, so the hatch worked out fine. 
Uh, what I did, I just used uh, scotch tape to hold the hatch in place for the flights. Clearly, if you're going to fly it longer term, you'd have to have a more permanent um, solution in place. But overall, very happy with the model. Weight of 12 ounces is about right. All the information on the motor, battery, etc. will be in the description um, that you can look at if you want to build your own. But very happy with this, the model the way it came out, and I encourage you for your efforts. Good luck.